Hey everyone, welcome to this continuation on the hand calc series. Today I'm going to be doing the second example problem using the TMR formalism. So go ahead and take an opportunity to pause your video and read through the problem statement. So writing down some of the data that we are given, we are given the reference dose is one centigrade per MU uh, that was actually calibrated in an SSD calibration. Uh, the calculation depth is 10 centimeters and the collimator field size is 10 by 15, which I've already worked out the equivalent square for that to be 12 centimeters using the 4a over p equation. And we are delivering 100 monitor units. And notice I bold in the problem statement to use the isocentric formalism. And I bolded it because this is a classic problem to use the percent depth dose formalism. And in fact, this is the same exact problem that I worked in uh, the PDD videos, this was the first example problem that I worked out, but I just want to show you how to do the same problem with the isocentric formalism instead, and uh, it should actually give you the same answer, and we will actually verify that in this video. So there's one thing right off the bat that we need to calculate. We need to calculate the field size at the depth of the calculation, and remember our depth is 10 centimeters, and our SSD is 100, so we are actually 110 centimeters away from the source. So we need to use beam divergence here. And this here is the equation that we can use to calculate that field size. We just take our calculation distance of 110 and divide it by the uh, source to isocenter distance of 100 and multiply it by the field size. That's just a similar triangles argument there. And we get a field size at depth of 13.2 centimeters, which we will need to use uh, later on in the calculation. So just keep that in the uh, back of your mind here. So now we can put it in equation form. In the top here I have the general dose equation using the TMR formalism, omitting the factors we don't need, like the tray factor, off-axis ratio, wedge. We don't have a wedge, so we don't need any of those factors. And in the second row I just substitute in the respective values. The TMR and the phantom scatter factor both use that um, field size of 13.2 centimeters that we calculated with the beam divergence formula, but the collimator scatter factor just uses that field size defined at the isocenter, which is just 12, uh, which was actually given in the problem statement. So we can go ahead and draw out our geometry again. So here's our reference condition. We know that the LINAC is delivering 1 centigrade per MU at a 100 centimeter SSD, field size of 10 by 10, a depth of D max, which is 1.5 for 6x. Then we can apply our inverse square correction, which you see here. So we move from the source to calibration point distance to uh, the distance uh, from source to the calculation point, which is 110 centimeters away since our SSD is 100 and our depth is 10. And now we can uh, apply our scatter factors. So the collimator moves to an opening of 12, but remember we need the phantom field size or the field size at the depth of the calculation for the phantom scatter factor, which is 13.2 by beam divergence. And then of course we can change our depth using the TMR for the field size at depth and a depth of 10 centimeters. And this is the geometry that we're dealing with now. And this just shows how we are changing our reference dose uh, by applying each of these factors. And I really like this example because this is a classic case where we would use the PDD formalism since we're at a 100 centimeter SSD, which is where our PDD was measured. So it's very straightforward to apply the PDD formalism, uh, but this just shows that we can use any formalism in any geometry and we should get the same answer, which we will go ahead and verify now. Now we can go to our beam data and notice I have two columns highlighted here. I have 13 and 14 since our field size was 13.2. Uh, it's not actually tabulated, so we need to interpolate between the field sizes 13 and 14 at a depth of 10. And the same goes for the phantom scatter factor over here on the right. We need to interpolate between those two field sizes. Of course, for the collimator equivalent square, we have the value of 12 already tabulated, so no need to worry about interpolating that value. Yeah, we just perform a linear interpolation to get the TMR and the phantom scatter factor. So if you this would be a good time to go review your linear interpolations if you haven't used it in a while. Uh, but we can perform those interpolations. We get these values shown here. And then, of course, we can put it all together. And this is what we get. So we take our reference dose multiplied by the inverse square factor. The inverse square factor here is just the source to calibration distance divided by the source to uh, calculation point distance, of course, squared. And then 
multiplied by MU and then the TMR in our scatter factors, and we get a dose of 68.6 centigrade, which sure enough is the exact same value that we got using the PDD formalism. And you can go verify that by uh, looking at the solution uh, in the, the previous video using the PDD formalism. So this just, it's a good exercise to show that you can, you can get the same answer by using the two different formalisms, but in this case, it would have been much easier to use the PDD formalism since we were already in the geometry uh, by which that PDD was actually measured. So we didn't, wouldn't, wouldn't have had to worry about any inverse square or anything goofy going on with that. So, but yeah, this was a little bit more involved uh, problem. And so um, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.